Good morning, folks. Today I come to you from a beautiful late winter North Carolina day. It's mid-February when I'm filming this. We are getting the first riding impressions of the Hammer Performance 1275 Sportster. A um, couple things. I tried filming this video about three times already because uh, uh, I was using my buddy's GoPro Hero 9 that he was very kind enough to let me borrow and try out because I've been using this old old uh, Sony camera for the longest time. And I, and I want to upgrade the video for you guys and, and, and really start getting this channel uh, growing. So I've been getting good, good you know, single digit uh, subscriber increases which is awesome, but I just wanna, you know, I wanna keep providing better and better and better, right? Anyway, so <clears throat> I get that camera all hooked up, get a, get a microphone all set up, plug everything in, realize that the setup was completely wrong, and uh, you know, you can't, like you need this special adapter to run a microphone, external mic on the GoPros, still, you know, still working through the learning curve on, on that whole deal. So I'm like, okay, fine, I went back to the drawing board. Hooked up the camera a different way, bought some parts, still not working, and now I don't know why. So I'm like, all right, hold on a minute. Let me let me use this camera to get some footage for you guys, and then once I can figure out the GoPro, I'll switch to that and then try that out. Um, because you know, too 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 much, too much, too much. I wanna you know I wanna still be making videos here and not just talking to myself in a camera and nobody can actually hear anything I'm saying. So uh, you know we're gonna do that. So for full disclosure, this is not the first time I've ridden this bike. Uh, it's probably the third or fourth, actually. So Hammer's break-in procedure, as I think I mentioned in my one of the build videos, is you have to start it up and let it idle for a brief 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, um, 40 seconds. Then you do a one-mile ride, then a two-mile ride. Uh, and then you do a... Then you can do a 50, do 50 mile ride, or you can break it up, I guess. But I just did 50 whole miles under 3,500 RPM, and now I need to do another like 450 over, or uh, you know, under 4,000 RPM. So yeah, I got a lot of riding to do, just cruising around, and it's it's hard. I purposely set the rev limiter to 4,000 because it's torturous to try to ride something like this and not get on it and test the power, you know. But I want to break this engine in right. I don't want this thing to freaking, uh, you know, get what they call uh, cylinder ring, piston ring micro welding. So from what I understand, the, the whole fear about revving these engines high uh, before they're broken in is the, the piston rings before they're properly worn to the bore, they'll scuff the scuff the bore, and they'll I guess leave deposits from the ring on the, the cylinder bore. I think that's the direction it goes in. I don't know. So something like that. You can you can look that up and prove me wrong. But uh, basically, you need to just ride it relatively easily and not go full throttle and all that jazz. You're just trying to minimize heat in the motor. Now the great thing about that is being an air-cooled engine and cooler temperatures, I'm inherently limiting heat into the motor because it's cooler day. So that's got to be good for it. They don't explicitly say that, but I'm thinking it is. Um, you also want to try to vary RPMs the best you can. It's kind of a neat rock. Um, so we'll just kind of be floating at different RPMs and speeds throughout the, the ride here the best we can. Um, what, what do I know so far? So this is not just from this ride. This is from the, I put, again, 70, 80 miles on this already. Um, so I don't think I'm talking out of my butt having just first rode it. So I can only rev it to four grand and I can't go full throttle. So everything I'm about to say, put it in that context. However, I did the Impact 560 cams, which gives you a red line out to 7,000 RPM. The cam actually makes power higher than that, but they said to cut it off at seven just to be safe. Um, and then the, uh, and then I got the 1275 kit and basically just a valve job, you know, mild head work, nothing crazy. Um, the 04 to 06 Sportster heads, a per hammer performance, are the best flowing Harley Sportster heads that they ever put on a Sportster. So I didn't really, because of that, I was like, I'm gonna get pretty good power just with the stock head, so I left them alone. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so how does the bike ride? Like, what's the real world? I've seen a lot of Hammer 1275 videos, and unless I'm missing something, please link them to me. I'd love to hear other people's opinions. I've never heard anybody talk about just like kind of how it feels compared to the 
the bike originally. Everyone just is like, oh, it's fast, it's fun. And there's no data, there's no like, there's no even subjective like opinion on how it feels. The best one was the Yemi New video. That gave me a good idea. He talks a lot about the frame geometry not being adequate for the power and all that stuff, which is really good info, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna do those determinations myself once I can rev it to seven grand. But for now, I'm gonna tell you what I can during break-in. And what I can tell you is, from under 3,000 RPM, this bike feels more or less stock. It's a little snappier, probably. Um, I think that just the two into one alone, even if I had done nothing else, is going to help that. But the Impact 560 cams don't build power until a little bit higher RPM. They're, they're, they're a higher revving cam. So if you look at the dyno graph on Hammer Sight, this bike doesn't really make a lot more power down low, and it shouldn't. The, the bigger displacement and the higher compression help, so it, it does make some more power, but it's not drastic, right? Where you get the drastic increase is, is really starting at like 3,500 RPM. That's where you really start to get to a point where the bike is building more power, uh, noticeably more power than it was before. And, and, and I will say, real life seems to translate pretty well because I've rolled into this thing like half throttle maybe, and from here it's kind of whatever, um, but when you hit 3,500 RPM, it, it really starts to grab and, uh, and accelerates nicely. Um, so it, it definitely, I can I can feel that this is going to be a rocket ship in, in comparison to what it was. You know, not in comparison to a sport bike and all that stuff. But it's just a good, solid engine for a motorcycle like this. Per the Yami New video, and I think he's spot on with this. I love these Forcers to death. I really, really do. But I will happily admit. They just don't have the frame geometry of even an, F an FXR, like much less a sport bike or something that's actually meant to handle. So you, you got to consider that, um, you know, uh, that this bike is just not made to go super fast, top end wise, especially. Now you can accelerate fast. That's a nice little sporty. You can accelerate fast. Um, you know, and the frame geometry doesn't matter quite as much. Get a good suspension on there, it'll squat, it'll hold, it'll hang, it'll, you know, it'll grip. But when you get going well over 100, which this bike kind of topped out at 120, now I'm presumably it'll top out quite a bit faster than that, right? I don't know. Uh, I don't have the best suspension, but I have pretty, you know, pretty decent suspension. And it's okay. It's just not a place I'd want to be and then go hit curves and stuff. Straight line's fine. I don't know that I really would want to like throw this bike into a corner at 120. I've thrown this bike into a corner at 85, 90, 100. And it's fine, again, but it's just, it's a little all over the place. And I have the steering dampener now and, you know, all this other stuff. I do think better suspension would absolutely help the corner performance. But you still have a rubber mounted motor on a not as stiff frame as say an FXR. So there are going to be compromises just with this, this unit. So in my opinion, because of that, if I were to build a real high horsepower sporty, like Hammer, Hammer has a 120, 130 horse, 1275 kit, and they also have uh, you know the 90 cubic inch kits and all that. Would I put one in a Sportster frame? Yeah, because it'd be awesome. Would I really consider uh, doing that in a Buell frame with a slightly extended swing arm to get the wheelbase where it needs to be because I know Buells can get twitchy because of their short wheelbase. I don't know. That might be a better option. Um, it's a good question, right? So, I don't know. Um, I'd have to kind of put some thought on that, but I want to see how this rides first. This should be around 100 to 110 wheel horse. Uh, so we'll call it 105 for argument's sake. Now, uh, well actually, I should caveat that with one thing. I did not do a carb on this. It's the stock CB40 carb. Um, according to Hammer's website, I'm right on the edge. So I might be losing a couple of horsepower up top. So this bike, let's just say maybe it's 100 because it's going to, you know, let, let's just say there's five horsepower on the table for argument's sake, um, you know, at the very top end. So I'm going to lose a little bit of power there. Um, which I want to see. Typically, I mean, without a dyno tune, you won't know for sure. But typically, if, if you have if you have an airflow issue, um, and you're you know like if I'm losing power way up top like that, I don't know. Historically, I found with different engines, you can usually feel that last few RPM will be kind of a dead zone, 
um, you know, it just won't pull as hard as it was before. And then you can, uh, you know, kind of get a rough idea if you should upgrade the carb or not. I could always throw it on a dyno as well. Um, so that's another option, which I might do. Uh, it, ru it runs great, at least under 4,000 RPM so far. So we'll see how it runs above that when I when I get everything broken in. But, uh, but yeah, so those are all just kind of details. I mean, the bike already, I can tell, performs better than it did, uh, you know, before this mod. And, and, I, and I took video, actually. Maybe it's good that I'm using this camera because I took video before I modified the bike. Well, okay, let me, let me back up. I have a bunch of video throughout the years and I can just go and look at the camera and see how fast I went from a certain, you know, point on the speedometer to another. Um, but uh, then I can take that video and some video I purposely shot of this bike just to try to get a rough idea of you know how much faster it actually is. Now, what I should have done, and I just didn't think about it, I should have bought one or borrowed my friend's uh, draggy module and done some zero to 60 timing and quarter, like do a quarter mile. So unfortunately, I didn't do that. However, I have enough footage lying around throughout the years. I can absolutely get you guys some really good data. It'll just won't be presented quite as pr pr prettily, pr prettily. I don't know if that's a word. But it'll be good enough data for, uh, you know, it'll, it'll achieve the, the goal. So, um, you know, you'll, you'll have, you'll, you'll know what you want to know. Because that's the other thing I haven't seen. Like, and again, it might be out there, but I've seen some drag strip times with the hammer kits and f right from, right from, uh, you know, hammer themselves and whatnot. But it just seems like a lot of guys who put these in, like they'll take like YouTube shorts of them, just the bike idling. And then they're not doing videos of like actually riding it and their thoughts. So I want to give you guys that. I want to be a source for, you know, is it worth doing? Like, let's find out together. I don't know. I mean, I, here's the thing with this kit for me. This bike was just eating oil and had, you know, all these issues, uh, uh, you know, wouldn't idle um, just because of the oil burning and everything else. So I needed to rebuild it and I wasn't going to rebuild it stock. So I said to myself, like, or, or I'm a pretty unbiased judge of this kit in the sense that I have no emotional attachment. I, it was it was a higher performance pile of parts for me to be able to fix my motorcycle. You know, if it's a higher performance, great. If not, I still love the bike and, you know, I mean, it will be higher performance, but I'm just saying, like, I don't have huge expectations for it. I'm not trying to race. I'm not, I don't, it was, it was never like too slow for me to begin with. So I'm just kind of unbiased in the sense that anything's better than what I had between the oil burning and everything else and the rest is bonus so uh, you know that's just kind of where I'm coming from and I'll tell you guys if I think that it was worth all the money I spent uh, you know compared to either repairing your bike stop for stop or if of course if your bike didn't need to be repaired then just would it be worth buying outright to get more performance is the performance gain worth the cost does it change does it change what the bike can do and, and what you're going to think of the bike enough to justify it let's find out i don't know i can tell you what so far it's put a giant smile on my face just even tinkering around under 4,000 rpm um and like if i needed to pass it wanted to pass this car when it was broken in i mean i guarantee you i'd just be around like a bullet so there's definitely functional reasons to have more power nobody's gonna argue with that so but, uh, but yeah, so so being caught under four or only being able to go four thousand RPM, uh, that's like eighty on this bike. Um, the one issue I've seen too, which is really strange, you might have already seen it in the video. If I accelerate, the speedometer. Okay, that time it moved. Sometimes the speedometer gets stuck until I let off the throttle, and then it like flings to the speed it should be at. It's really kind of strange. I don't understand what the heck's going on there, so I got to do some research. I have a new ignition module in it because you need to with the kit, and I believe the ignition modules in these somehow drive the speedometer, which I don't really know how that works, but... But uh, somehow it works, so we'll have to figure that out. Um, one thing I am noticing is... That was probably about half throttle. It seems to get too much fuel down low. So I might want to change where my needle jet sits. It's got a pretty fat main jet in it now. And it just, like, if you, if you, if you crank the throttle too hard, it bogs the bike a little bit. So 
So I'm gonna have to look into that. But like those, these are little things I gotta figure out, right? Like, you know, you might want a little different. I, I don't really remember what I tuned it for for the other mode for the stock motor. I don't think I messed with the needles C position. But just little stuff like that. Um, you know, that speedometer getting stuck, like I told you. So. But I mean, it, 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 see how it's stuck a little bit? But, I mean, that's like, you know, half throttle. That ain't much. And it just, it pulls nice. 3,500 RPM is where it comes alive, like I said. So we're wrapping up this ride here, getting close to to home. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching. God bless America, and I'll see you in the next one.